Good morning and welcome to the Daily Summation from Kurt's Religion and Politics. I'm your host, I'm Kurt, and I'm glad to have you aboard this morning. Uh, I am uh, here on the uh, on Friday, the uh, 23rd of October of 2020, and today I wanted to talk about a blog post that I did called In Defense of Repugnance. It seems like a kind of an odd thing to say, right? It seems like an odd thing to actually talk about uh, defending the idea of repugnance, but really what it's all about, uh, you could argue, is free speech, right? What we're actually talking about is this. Well, there, there are a number of things, right? But the first thing that we're saying is this, or I'm saying. I, I want to get out of the habit of saying we're saying, because where we're discussing this, you could say, I'm really the one who's talking. But it, that being said, what we're, what I'm saying is this. <clears throat> if you don't have people being allowed to say things that are repugnant, there's an issue with potential curtailment mm -hmm of the right to free speech. And that, that doesn't even matter. You can, you can make the argument that the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution only applies to the U.S. Congress, so there are people who uh, are saying that there's essentially some sort of doctrine that makes it so that it applies for other, at least other levels of government and potentially more, right? But my attitude is that the freedom of speech should be something that is as widely expressed and allowed as possible, right? That you should be interested, as interested in any government in allowing free speech as you can possibly be. And that the only time that you should potentially curtail or abridge free speech is when people are doing things that are illegal or otherwise problematic. And I mean, they have to be really, really problematic in my view, in order for you to tell people you can't speak freely. And I've said this before in other things that I've, other videos that I've done and other blog posts that I've written and so forth. But that's, that's what I'm saying is in my mind, look, you need to make sure that freedom of speech is on the top of your list of things to protect in terms of, uh, in terms of your rights. Uh, the, the other one that would reside near the top, of course, would be the Second Amendment right to the, to bear arms, right? To keep and bear arms. But we're not going to really get into that too much today. The thing about it, the thing about it is, if people speak in ways that are repugnant, you should be able to recognize that that's the case and it should help to kind of center you better <clears throat> as time, you know, as you, as you hear those things being said, you ought to be able to go, oh, that's repugnant. And I ought to make it possible for you to go, okay, now what's, what's a real reasonable perspective that this person could have presented? Now, here's the thing. <clears throat> it's also possible that a person who speaks in a way that you find to be highly objectionable is right. It's possible that you may not think when you hear them initially <clears throat> what this person is saying, what they're doing is actually right. But as you think about it, and as you begin to internalize exactly what it is that that individual is saying, you may come to the conclusion that they're actually correct. And here's the thing, even if you don't, being able to hear people say things and bounce off of those things and actually think about them, consider what they're saying, and, and come up with other ideas as a result of what they're saying is equally helpful, right? And maybe some of what they're saying is right, and maybe some of it is not, and maybe you, you can kind of separate in your mind those things, or maybe none of it's right, but the reality is this. When, when two people, when one person listens to another person, okay, when one person listens to another person, what comes of that can be one of four things. Either that person can shut the other off, or that person can learn something, or that person can use that opportunity to teach that other person something, or they both can learn something, which I think probably most of the time is the more likely outcome. Okay, here's the thing too, okay, if a person says things that are horribly bad for you to hear, then you know something about that person, at least in terms of what they're willing to say. You may not agree with what they're willing to say, but now you have some insight into who that individual is. And here's the thing. Imagine, uh, well, think about this. Think about this. You've probably heard of a number of instances where people said, wow, that just came totally out of the blue. But the truth is, part of the reason the thing that they're talking about was totally unexpected, was completely unexpected, was that the person 
who did that thing or said that thing at some point finally along the way, uh, pro you know, felt that they would be beaten down or, or, or given that unapproving glare if they decided to actually speak their mind. So they just didn't until they couldn't hold it in anymore and they let it out. Well, now you've got this person who's, who's speaking their mind, who's saying what they think, right, uh, or doing something that's a result of that, and you don't know about it because that person couldn't speak their mind. And here's, a, here's another point, right? Imagine this. If a person can't, doesn't feel like they can speak, okay, if they don't feel like they can speak, <clears throat> then that person is going to be, going to probably feel a great deal less self-worth, I'll put it that way, is going to probably feel a great deal less self-worth self because they feel like if they say something, it's somebody trundles over the top of them or people just aren't listening, right? So if nothing else, if you accomplish nothing else by allowing somebody to speak their mind, what you do is Get, help somebody to uh, to have a little bit higher evaluation of self uh, for that person. Now, obviously, there are people who don't have a problem with that. I'm one of those people who mostly you don't have to worry as much about that. But even so, the thing is, you know, my attitude for a very long time has been, look, if you're not willing to listen to me, if you're not willing to hear what I've got to say, whether it sounds uh, repugnant or... or uh, uh, abhorrent to you or not, if you're not willing to listen to what I have to say, then you miss whatever might have come out of that for you. That's pretty much the reality there. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of my attitude in general about things. If nothing else, it's true that people gain a part of their worth from the fact that others are willing to listen to what it is that they have to say. So if you're not willing to listen to others, you're sort of degrading their worth to some degree. Now, that doesn't mean that what the person says is lovely and perfect and correct and that you have to agree with it. That's not what that means. It just means that you ought to take the time to listen to what other people have to say, even if it sounds abhorrent, even if it sounds repugnant, even if it sounds horrible, you should listen to it and maybe in the process, as I say, you'll learn something. Maybe in the process, they will. Or maybe in the that uh, that discussion, that that conversation, the two of you will both take something away. And maybe, just maybe, it'll be something that neither of you initially had in mind when you started the discussion. I can't tell you how many times somebody's said something. And what they said was intended to be one thing, and what I got out of it was something totally different than what they intended to put out there. So this is kind of my take, and, and you can take this however you want. I defend not just people's right to speak. I defend people's right to, to put things out there that sound objectionable, that sound repugnant, uh, that sound problematic, because if it doesn't do another thing for me, it allows me to have a window into that person so that I can actually uh, come to some conclusions about who they are. Now, the thing is, you have to line that up with actions, of course. So if their actions are different than their speech, either they believe something and they're not willing to act on it, or they don't actually believe that thing, and that's another consideration as well. But all of that having been said, here's to me what it all comes down to. The First Amendment was not put out there because people thought everybody's going to love what everybody else says. It was put out there because people realized that some of the things that other people said were going to be considered objectionable in na nature. Even if they were true, even if they were correct, people were going to object to those things. That concept, that principle applies just as well to what you listen to. If you close your mind when somebody says something that sounds to you like it's an objectionable thing, then the fact that it's objectionable is your essentially willingness, makes your essential willingness to censor their free speech, at least in your mind. And the better way to deal with that in my mind is to look at it, to take it apart, to deal with it, and to actually decide what would be the correct thing to, to say and do when where, where what they have put out there is concerned. Okay, I'm out of time. Uh, I hope you're having a great day. It's a little bit rainy here in this area. 
Uh, again, we're seeing that fall weather a little more as time moves on, uh, but it's still a pretty nice day. Uh, again, I hope you're having a great day, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow. That will be Saturday, the 24th of October of 2020. And if we don't see you tomorrow, uh, it may be as late as Monday. What will that be, the 24th? 25th, uh, 26th, tomorrow's the 24th, 25th, 26th, uh, Monday the 25th of October, but probably I will get a chance to do a video again tomorrow, and probably I'll also get a chance to do one on the 25th, and that should be Sunday. All right, you have a great day, and we will hopefully see you again tomorrow. Thanks for checking out this video. Remember that you can like it on YouTube and you can give it a rumble on Rumble if you want to do that. Uh, I have channels on both YouTube and Rumble. They are the Kurtz Religion and Politics channels. You can subscribe to either one of those if you want to do so. Remember, if you subscribe on YouTube, you probably want to click the notification bell in order to be notified of new content. Um, if you want to see more from me, you can check me out on my blog, that's blogs.kpshubert.com, blogs.kpshubert.com. You can also see my Facebook page, that is uh, Kurtz Religion and Politics on Facebook. You can check out my Twitter, Twitter uh, Parlor, and Minds.com accounts. My handle on all three of those is at kpshubert, that's at kpshubert. You can um, check out my podcast. The podcast is at podcasts.kpshubert.com. That's podcasts.kpshubert.com. And finally, you can check me out on Patreon. And if you want to support me, that's probably one of the better places that you can do that. I am Kurt's Religion and Politics there. Thanks again for checking out this video, and hopefully we will see you again tomorrow.